Good evening, Tony Tardio here in the 3AW newsroom covering the 2010 election and at this stage the result is still up in the air with uh, coalition wins, uh, the Labor being hammered in Queensland and some areas of New South Wales but the ALP could pick up some seats in Victoria. The Labor vote is down 9% in Queensland, 6% of that is going to the Greens, maybe the Greens may help them over the line. With me in the studio is uh, Steve Murphy. Steve. Uh, we spoke about a half an hour ago. What's uh, happened since then? Any movement? Tony, it's a very interesting uh, situation that we're seeing uh, across the country at the moment. If anybody thought that uh, this was uh, anything other than a cliffhanger election, then the results that we're seeing now proves that it is, in fact, what we all expected, and that is a very, very close election indeed. Um, on the current numbers, uh, the... Uh, coalition is forecast to pick up 11 seats in Queensland and 7 in New South Wales for a, net ga for a, for a gain of 18, which would give them 77 seats in the lower house. Enough to form government. And enough to form government, provided they hold all of the seats that they currently have. Now, which it doesn't look like is going to happen here in Victoria. No, it doesn't. On the numbers that we're seeing in Victoria, uh, they have already lost McEwen. They are likely to lose Latrobe and possibly Dunkley. Um, and in South Australia, we expect that uh, they look like uh, losing Boothby. So that is four seats, which takes them back to um, a net result of 73, if everything else holds up. Uh, for the Labor Party, uh, given that they will lose on these numbers 18 from their current 88, uh, which would take them down to 70, they have lost the seat of Melbourne to the Green Adam Bant. Um, which uh, then takes them down to uh, 69, but of course they've picked up McEwen, Latrobe, Dunkley and Boothby, which takes them to 73. Well, so the polls... on those numbers we've got 73 for the Coalition, 73 for Labor, um, and we have three independents who have all been re-elected, plus Adam Bant the Green, so at this point in the night we could well end up with a hung parliament. Uh, that is pretty much what uh, some people had uh, predicted. Let's go through some of the personalities uh, so far and what we know. The, the lady that uh, beat John Howard in 2007 in the seat of Benelong, she looks like she has lost her seat. Yeah, the uh, Australian, Australian Electoral Commission is prepared to call the seat of Benelong um, and John Alexander, uh, the former Australian Davis Cup champion, um, uh, will be the new member for Benelong, the seat, of course, that was held by former Prime Minister John Howard for more than 30 years. And I think, Tony, what we're seeing uh, in a seat such as Benelong is that Maxine McHugh uh, was a once-off. I mean, in, in the truest sense, she was a once-er. Um, it was a seat that probably should never have gone um, against, uh, you know, the Liberal Party. And what we're seeing is it historically coming back uh, to being a mid-range Liberal Party seat, as you would expect. The, the vote of the Greens, as you said, uh, they look like picking up the seat of Melbourne, their first uh, lower house member in the federal parliament. Uh, how have the Greens gone across the country? I think they've gone as well as what most people would have uh, expected. Their vote is not up around the 13-14% uh, that was forecast in the polls. It's sitting around 8 or 9% on average across the country, which is traditionally uh, traditionally uh, where the Greens vote is. And of course it will be significant in terms of determining a, a raft of very close seats um, along the eastern seaboard as those preferences are distributed. Of course you remember the ALP uh, and the Greens entered into a preference swap deal at the beginning of the campaign, which was of significant embarrassment to the Green Party and indeed its leader Bob Brown, who effectively disowned it. Um, at the beginning and uh, was publicly urging people not to follow the how to vote cards, not in all seats but in 54 marginal seats across the country uh, and it will end up playing a significant role in determining who forms government after the 2010 election is finally all counted. The seat of Eden Monero, now I think since 1972, since Gough Whitlam's days, uh, that seat has always been held by the party which goes on to win government. Uh, tonight it looks like Labor will win that seat. Uh, could it possibly be that for the first time in uh, over 30 years that those voters in that seat might actually get it wrong? 
Uh, well, it could, it could well be. There is a small swing to the Labor Party in Eden Monero. Um, it was uh, held by a margin of 2.3% going into this election. Uh, the swing uh, from the beginning has been around about 0.9 of 1%, so you would say that uh, Eden Monero is uh, a Labor Party hold. And uh, I can tell you that uh, Adam Bant, uh, the Green candidate uh, for the seat of Melbourne, um, is uh, effectively declaring victory. Uh, in that seat uh, as we speak. Uh, of course, the Labor Party has held the seat of Melbourne uh, since 1904. Uh, the outgoing member was uh, the former Finance Minister Lindsay Tanner, who decided to retire at this election for family reasons. So history being made uh, in Victoria tonight uh, with uh, the first Greens uh, member in the House of Representatives, uh, Adam Bant, declaring victory uh, in the seat of Melbourne. And of course the, vote, the polls have uh, only just closed in uh, Western Australia where it's uh, just after uh, it's 6.23 in the, in the evening. Uh, any surprises over there do you think? Uh, obviously the, the early results are, are very small at this stage. Tony, if Western Australia follows uh, New South Wales and Queensland where the swings were expected to be quite large against the Labor Party, uh, then there won't be any surprises in the West. Um, if uh, it is replicated there, then what we will see is uh, the seat of Swan, uh, which is notionally Labor after the redistribution, but there is an incumbent Liberal member. We will see Swan go to the Liberals, and we will see the other seat uh, over there, Hasluck, um, also go to uh, the Liberal Party. And given, uh, given the state of play, as we described at the beginning of this report, if the Liberal Party picks up those two seats, uh, Swan and Hasluck, it could mean the difference between a working majority and a hung parliament. Let's just repeat, we have a 150-seat federal parliament, and at the moment, the way the, uh, the seats are going, uh, Steve, you're predicting that both parties could get themselves to uh, almost within 75, the magic 75, 76 yeah. figure that they need, but may well fall short, both of them. At this point, um, and there's a long way to go, and a number of the swings in a number of the seats uh, you know, could change uh, significantly um, as the total of the vote gets counted, but at this point, on our calculations, we're looking at 73 Labor, 73 the Coalition, three independents, um, and the one Green, which is Adam Bant, uh, the now member for Melbourne, which would give us a hung parliament, um, a minority government uh, would need to be formed on the basis of uh, what those three independents and the Green determined to do. We're covering the election here on 3AW. We'll be back with more after this short break.